In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can get rid of the crazy fumes of terps inside your studio. So we're going to fully cut out the use of terps, and that's going to be much better for your health and for the surrounding. You don't have all those crazy fumes that you need to breathe in and deal with all the time. So let me show you what I do. So all the years I've just been using terps that you get from the hardware store. So I've never used it inside the paint. I've never liked that. I've always preferred to stick to using a painting medium inside the paint. So I'd always use something like this inside the inside the paint. The terps is always merely just to clean your brushes and for clean up afterwards the table and so on. But I've never been happy with the fumes. So what I've come up with as a solution, it's probably not the perfect solution. I'm sure there's a better way, but this is this is what I've found so far. It does cost, unfortunately, a few dollars to get started, but I'll show you a way how you can make that cost almost negligible. So you're going to take your turpentine and you're going to replace it with linseed oil. So... Refined linseed oil is traditionally used to mix into your paint as a, as a the binder, the oil inside the oil paint. Um, what I'm using here is just raw linseed oil. There's no additives, there's nothing in it, but you can't use it to paint because it, it does yellow over time. But the tiny amount that would ever get into it after you've washed your brush is negligible and can't do any harm to the paint itself. So even in that sense, it's better than using uh, turpentine. But the big thing with the raw linseed oil is it has no smell. So when you're working in the studio, you never have to worry about having breathing problems and stuff like that. I've had lots of students that have battled with oil paint simply because of the turpentine. It, it's that strong fumes for that have given them asthma and all sorts of other breathing related issues just simply because they can't handle that strong um, harsh smell. So all I do when I am painting is I literally take a, a container so this here is just a tuna tin, and I fill it up with um, linseed oil instead of turpentine. So whenever I need to wash my brush, I, I, traditionally I would just dip it into the turpentine and I'd start washing away. When using the linseed oil, you obviously want to keep the linseed oil now as clean as possible so that you can reuse it again and again and again so that it doesn't cost you as much money. So let me get some paint onto a brush, like this. So it's just a brush that's been loaded with paint as though you've been painting on it. So instead of just dipping it into the your tin to, to wash it as you normally would, what you're first going to do is you're just going to take some paper towel and you're going to wipe off the excess onto the paper towel first. So now there's most of your there's most of your paint and there's just a little bit left over there. And that you can now go ahead and wash. In the oil. So now that's barely dirty the oil at all. Then what I do is I just press it here against the end of the tub. So any excess oil runs back down into the tub. Then you can take your paper towel and just dry off that last little bit of oil that was left inside the brush. Now you have a beautifully clean brush ready for the next color. Now I want to show you where the magic happens where you're saving yourself all the money and reusing your linseed oil. So what you're going to do is you're going to take two containers the one container is going to have dirty linseed oil in it and the other one is going to have 
clean linseed oil in it. So this one over here is my dirty linseed oil container. So this one has been standing now for a while. So what happens is at the end of a painting session, you simply take this guy, you pop your, throw your used linseed oil in there and you leave it for a week or two. Then all the solids from the paint sink down to the bottom. You can see it over there. So this over here is clean linseed oil. Yes, it has a little bit of a stain, but it's still clean linseed oil. That little bit of a discoloration is normal. Um, we would recycle our turps in exactly the same way to also make that last longer. So you're using the same technique as you would for the turps to recycle it. So when painting, that little bit of a discoloration there makes absolutely no difference because you're only using it to wash your brushes with anyway and you're drying off any excess. So when that's settled for a while, then you take your settled oil and you carefully throw it in to the clean oil tub. So it's now really important that you don't, as you pour, you don't get any of the dirt inside there. So just pour really carefully until you see this, that paint residue. You can see, look there, it's quite, it's quite murky. So the linseed oil that I've just used now, I'm throwing it in there like that. You can see it doesn't look good. Looks really bad, but in a week, the paint will have settled and it will look like you saw it a minute ago. So there are now two extra considerations that you would need to do when using the linseed oil instead of the turps. The first one is your brushes. After you a finished painting session, there is now, and you've washed it, there is now still traces of oil inside the brush, right? So what you want to do is wash the brush so I'm just going to show you how to wash the brush. So to wash my brushes, I just use standard hand soap. You could use a bar. I use this little, one of those little foaming guys. So it's standard hand soap that you use in the bathroom. And this is a old yogurt lid. So I'm just washing the brush inside that foam like this. And then I'll rinse him off inside this a little tub of water. And my whole painting session, all the brushes get washed in the same little tub of water and this little bit of soap. That's enough. So I usually wash each one twice. Give them a good old rinse. And then just take my, my cloth, my painting cloth, and dry them off on there. Now my brush is beautiful, soft and clean and all I've got is a little bit of water with some soap so I'll take the excess soap pop that into the water and this water here I go and throw out on the grass outside the studio so there's no paint residue getting into our drinking water system and then also to to clean the container itself I just take paper towel again and I'm going to soak this up. Soak any of that oil up in there and the tiny little amount that's left over inside there doesn't matter. So this is where the second consideration comes in. When you're using oil to clean your brush and to mop up and so on. Now you've got large amounts of oil on this paper. So the way the oil dries is it dries by oxidation. And in that process, what happens is it generates heat. It warms up as it dries. So there is apparently a chance that this oil here, as it dries, could spontaneously combust. So personally, I've 
never experienced that and i'm suspecting it's only really going to happen when it's really really soaked you have a lot of oil if you have a piece of paper towel that just has tiny amounts of trace amounts of oil on it like this i don't think you're going to worry about that you can just throw that in the dustbin but when you have like a paper like this that you've really soaked up the oil so there's quite a lot of oil it's it's saturated with the oil then for safety's sake what i've done is i've gone and bought myself a ash bucket which looks like that so all it is is just a a metal dustbin so what i do is i just throw all my well laden oil laden cloths or papers into there and it doesn't take the linseed oil long to dry when it's like this it just takes a few days so by the time this guy is filled up all those guys are perfectly dry and then you can dispose of it in the dustbin as normal so it's just a safety precaution from the experts so who am I to argue with them? I've never experienced it, but I'd rather be safe than sorry. And the ash bucket only cost me twenty dollars at the at the hardware store anyway, so that wasn't too bad. Now I want to show you how I clean up the table surface that I'd normally paint on. So you're obviously getting paint on that as you work, and now you need to clean that up, which you would also normally just throw some turps onto a cloth and mop it up. But no, we don't want to do that anymore. So I'm going to show you what I use for that. So what I'm using for cleanup now is a product called Handy Andy. It's just an all-purpose cleaner which you use around the house. It smells great. It's not hard on your skin or anything like that. But I don't use it neat, although you could. Um, I dilute it. So what I've got here is this just a spare spray bottle that i had around the house and i filled it up probably up to here with water just plain water and that last little bit i filled that up with handy andy and i gave it a good shake and that's what i'm using now to clean the table so i have dirtied the table and i'll show you what i do so before using this handy andy water mixture i just give the bottle a shake and then all i'm going to do is just Give a few little light sprays you can see there isn't much liquid over there whatsoever and i take an old my, my painting cloth for the day look at that I give it a clean and then just to make sure afterwards i just give it a second wipe and now my painting surface is perfectly clean my cloth he's only got a little bit of water and handy handy on it along with the, the paint and stuff so I'll throw him back in his box to dry for the paint to dry and now instead of my studio smelling horrible every time I walk in here it smells beautifully clean now you may also be wondering so how do you clean your palette because you'd normally mop up all the excess paint with the turps so here i've got a a palette full of paint the end of the painting session so what i'm going to do is just scrape off all the excess paint like this get rid of that on a on a paper towel so this gets rolled up and thrown into the dustbin Now I'm going to scrape off any last little excess that I can. So normally at this point I would throw some turps on there and then the turps would now soak up all the excess. So I'm not 
doing that anymore. Now I'm wiping up any excess that I, as much excess that I can. Just to minimize the amount of paint that's left on the palette. Now I'm going to take my bottle with the water in the handy handy. Give this guy a, a nice generous spray. And if you have paint that's dried on the palette, you can leave this now for an hour or two. And that will soften up the paint. Look at this. Now I'm just taking a piece of paper towel and I'm wiping up my, my palette. That's pretty amazing, eh? Any little hard dried bits? I'll just scrape off the excess. The last few bits, get another spritz of Andy Andy. Perfectly clean palette, perfectly clean table, beautifully smelling studio. And I can breathe. Also, when you're working with the turps and stuff and cleaning ev up, you usually get some on you or your clothes and stuff. So your family complains that you... You smell like turps and everything as well. So that's even that's that complaint has now disappeared. So I'm sure it's not the perfect solution. I'm sure there is a better way of working even more fume free, but I'm sure you'll agree with me the handy handy and linseed oil is much better than the turps for you. So give that a bash and see how that works for you.